Yes, yes, I'm awake. Yes, it's morning. <laughs> I'm here with an anarchy moment. I'm here listening to Steve Hackett, Genesis Revisited Live. Now, for those of you who don't know who Steve Hackett is, Steve Hackett was one of the original members of Genesis, the band, back in the day. Genesis is, of course, now defunct. Phil Collins doesn't play drums anymore. He has something going on with his hands. So they're not they're not making any new stuff. They did try to make an album without him. It sucked balls terribly. Anyhow, Steve Hackett, one of the original members of Genesis, has been continuing to keep the, gen the old Genesis music alive because the old Genesis and the new Genesis when I say Genesis the band for those of you who are thinking about things like Invisible Touch no 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 that is not that is not the old Genesis Genesis actually they made this opposing arc to the Beatles because the Beatles back in their early day were you know the three minute 10 second pop songs I wanna hold your hand I wanna hold your hand so the Beatles started off in the pop music realm and shifted you know to stuff like uh, Helter Skelter and the White Album and I mean I'm not even really sure how you describe it because I don't like you know, as, as, as I always say, there's two kinds of music. There's music I like and there's music I don't like. So the Beatles progressed from the pop music to the longer songs, the more intricately musically structured songs, non-repetitive lyrics, you know, songs with no choruses, things like that. Genesis went in exactly the opposite direction. Genesis started... Well, their very first album was somewhat closer to a pop album, more conventional, more formula, formulaic music. But then their early albums were what most people would call progressive rock. Five minute songs, 10 minute songs, 25 minute songs, uh, unconventional, tuning, you know, unconventional chord structures, all, all this other stuff. So anyhow, it was complete opposite. So if your thoughts of Genesis are things like the Invisible Touch album, that's not what we're talking about. Anyway, Steve Hackett, original member, left back in the day, is still keeping the old songs alive. He has two albums out, Genesis Revisited 1 and Genesis Revisited 2, in which he performs old Genesis tunes. And... I was on Amazon.com this morning, and I'll tell that story in a minute before I get around to talking about what I'm actually going to talk about in this edition of Anarchy Moment. Because, you know, God forbid we just fucking go right into the subject, right? What was I talking about? Shit. Oh, yeah! So, Genesis revisited Steve Hackett. So I get on Amazon.com this morning, and as I'm looking around, because of its little, you bought this, so you might like this thing, I saw that there is a Genesis Revisited Live CD and DVD. And I looked at that, and I said, oh, shit, man, I have to buy that. I have to. It's like, I, I have to. It was $30. It's $30 well spent. It's supporting Steve Hackett, who's keeping Genesis Music Alive because God knows somebody has to do it, because the old Genesis music is fucking brilliant. So now I'm listening to it on the internet, because apparently if you buy an album on Amazon.com, you can now listen to the music over the internet. I'm, I'm so up on technology. <clears throat> God, I fucking hate technology. Which brings me to why I was on Amazon.com. I fucking hate technology. My wireless computer mouse died. All these years, my wireless computer mouse fucking dies. And it's like, I spend more time fucking with technology, trying to get shit done, than I do getting shit done. Remember back in the day, 
for those of us who are old when they said oh yeah we're gonna have technology and it's gonna make our lives easier and oh look computers are gonna free up so much of our time and we'll be able to do other stuff is it, has anyone else noticed that we're not doing other stuff all we're doing is trying to make our fucking computers work because the computers keep fucking up or they get viruses or you can't install the software or the driver doesn't work or your fucking mouse breaks or Jesus fucking H Christ on a stick. Yes, technology is making my life so much fucking better. Let me tell you what. All right, I'm going to pause the music if I can figure out how to work this. There we go. Because now we're going to, now that I'm finished babbling about how amazing Steve Hackett is. And Steve Hackett's solo albums are absolutely fantastic. Again, if you like, if you like classical music, or I mean, he's not classical, but I mean, if you like classical music, or if you like progressive rock, if you like rock music that exits away from the, you know, chorus, <clears throat> excuse me, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, repeat, verse, repeat, chorus, whatever, you know. If you like the if you like the shit that steps away from the normal, you would like his music. Give it a listen. And another person who was a member of Genesis back in the day who is also well worth listening to is Anthony Phillips. He also Anthony Phillips has a very wide repertoire as well. Some of his albums, his solo albums. I guess his albums would also be the same as his solo albums. My brain will work any moment now. Some of Anthony Phillips' albums are, in fact, classical music. He has one where it's him playing 12-string guitar. He's got another one where it's him playing piano. And then some of his albums are pretty much outright just rock and roll. So he's got a very wide palette of abilities in the musical realm. I highly recommend checking out some Anthony Phillips as well. Yep, it's a shame. Gen well, I mean, you know, if Genesis would have stayed as one unity, who knows what would have happened. I mean, in a way, it's good that they broke off. And of course, Peter Gabriel, for those of you who don't know the history of Genesis, Peter Gabriel was originally with Genesis also. You know, he broke off and did his thing. Steve Hackett broke off and did his thing. Anthony Phillips broke off and did his thing. Okay, are we done with that? I think I'm done with that. The Rec Room. I know I said I was finished with it, but I'm not because... So first of all, just saw yesterday that the Collegian, the Colorado State University newspaper, also did an article following up on this. They did the same thing. They said they talked to a bunch of people who were said uh, the Rec Room just could was racist, yada, yada, yada. I think about it, I will try posting a link to the article. I should go back and read it again just to get my own mind straight. But here's the most important thing, because there's two things I want to just follow up on about the whole rec room racism debate that I didn't really cover in the two podcasts where I talked extensively about this, but didn't really drive these couple of points home. So the first one is... There are numerous people in the comments who asserted that if the rec room has a dress code and doesn't want to let certain people in, they don't have to do that because it's their business. And it's their business as in it's their business establishment and they can control access to it. And I always find this sort of response interesting because, of course, this is, first of all, this is the anarcho-capitalist response which is to say, you know, I own this building, I can control who comes into this building and who doesn't. And so listening to a bunch of statists invoke anarcho-capitalist arguments is hilarious, especially when you consider that this is absolutely not true. I mean, none of the people who are writing these responses saying, you know, it's your business, You, they can. it's their business, they own it, they can let people in or not let people in as they desire. None of those people believe that because through our society, through democracy, through the government, through the state, we have established a shit ton of regulations 
which are imposed upon businesses and the people who own the businesses which control what the people who own businesses can do with their businesses. You cannot allow smokers to smoke in your building in Fort Collins. So to make the argument that, well, the rec room can refuse anybody they want because they own that business and they have control over who comes in, in theory, that would be true. In practicality, the idea that the people who own a business can refuse entry to somebody is absolutely not true. What if there's not? What if it's not wheelchair accessible? The government will fucking show up and fine you. You could stand out there and say, "Well, I don't want people with wheelchairs to come in." And what's going to happen? You're going to be attacked. You're going to be demonized. You're going to be fined large amounts of money. You might even go to jail. So while that is. Uh, That, that uh was for me, not even for the situation. Because I started a sentence with the word so. That's bad speaking skills, kids. Do not do what I do. The idea that the rec room can you know, not let people in because they don't want to and that they have that right because they own that space in theory is true. In an anarcho, yeah. in an anarcho-capitalist world, that would be the truth. We don't live in that world. We live in a world where the state controls other people's property. And as I said, somewhere along the way, there's going to be some kind of law. Somebody's going to try to pass a fucking law, because that's what they always do. Now, I also read in the Collegian article that the rec room has now posted a dress code in written form. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't looked for it. They didn't say where it was, where it wasn't, yada, yada, yada. This is all just me. And I read this article late last night. I was getting in bed, and I got a little notification on my freaking tablet for Facebook, and I looked, and somebody had posted. But so I read it. I was tired. Anyway, second thing. On the second rec room article this piece of shit the the second rec room article on late night for collins where she interviewed the guy who used to work there or worked for the owners he as he said he didn't actually work he didn't actually do door at rec room but he did door at yeti but it's the same owners yada 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 anyhow the first one of the comments on that was by this fucking scumbag douchebag named ray martinez and at the time I couldn't really remember where I knew Ray Martinez from, but I knew I knew him. Okay, Ray Martinez left this comment talking about how this article was not real journalism and attacking the person who writes this blog for not being a real journalist and not having any facts and all this other shit. And I kept thinking, who the fuck is this Ray Martinez faggot? Okay, Ray Martinez used to be the mayor of Fort Collins for three fucking years. Before that, he was a fucking cop. He was a man who killed other humans for money. Then he became a scumbag politician. Ray Martinez, and then it all comes flooding back. Ray Martinez is the faggot douchebag who thought the movie... Ah! What's the name of the movie? Fuck! Uh, the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, ah! oh, oh, my brain. Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness. He thought Reefer Madness was a documentary. This is this... He, Ray Martinez is a fucking anti-marijuana pig. He is a supporter of the drug war. He is a supporter of murdering people for having plants. Ray Martinez is a fucking idiot. Then, come to find out... In the Collegian article I read last night, it mentions that Ray Martinez is also the... Oh, God, what was it? What was it? Oh, man. All right. See, I hate to put out false information. Hold on. I got to see if I can do this. Let me see if I can find this. Because I fucking hate knowingly saying shit. That I, I can't remember exactly what it is. Blah, blah, blah. All right, 
Come on, load, computer. Fucking internet. You guys may not know this. The internet is actually... Hmm, interesting. The internet is actually powered by little hamsters. All right, here we go. Hey, it's right on top. The rec room thingy. All right, here we go. Where is Faggot Martinez? And for those of you out there who are homosexuals, I realize that calling Ray Martinez a faggot and that some people call you homosexuals faggots and so I realize I'm associating you with Ray Martinez and I realize that's really unfair because Ray Martinez is a piece of shit and you guys are just homosexuals and so insulting you by associating you with Ray Martinez even indirectly like that, sorry, but Ray Martinez is a fucking faggot. I mean... He's a fucking faggot. That's all there is to it. He is the definition of a goddamn fag. I fucking despise everything about this cock of shuck. And yes, here it is. Ray Martinez, a public relations representative for the rec room. Oh, no wonder Ray Martinez is jumping to the defense of the rec room on the blog and accusing the blogger of not being a real journalist and not having any facts. He's on the fucking payroll for the rec room. He didn't mention that in his little fucking comment. Ray Martinez has this terrible fucking website. He's, he, he's a consultant now. Now that, you know, he's not a cop, so he can't kill people legally anymore and get pay raises for it. And he's not a politician, so he can't pass laws against marijuana. Now, apparently, he is a consultant, which is what all fucking douchebags do after they're washed up. Ray Ray Martinez, super faggot that he is, also wrote a book. Oh yes, a book. Hold on a second. Let me open this. <clears throat> See if he's written any other books or if he's a one shot, one kill. Hmm. I see a bunch of, okay, this is not books. Look in Amazon. Why, why are you doing that? All right, fuck it. Now, if I'm on Amazon.com and I click on the author thing, it should take me to things only by that author, not things by people with related names. Goddamn fucking internet. Because I'm pretty sure Ray Martinez did not write all these books. All right, I suppose it's possible. But what the fuck would Ray Martinez know about any of this shit? I know, sorry guys, I'm taking you along on my little voyage of discovery here. There's this thing I found, it's called the, the internet. I'm I'm not sure how this works, but I'm 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 put I'm clicking some buttons on here and I, I, I don't know what's happening, but it wants my credit card number. And what's this oh this nice girl wants to take her clothes off for me. Alright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he wrote this book called The Truth About Marijuana, America's Snake Oil. <laughs> because, because, because this fucking douchebag faggot who used to kill people for a living, he's a fucking expert on marijuana. Now, this fucking douchebag used to be a fucking pig. He used to get money from the drug war be, by confiscating it from people who have marijuana. Do you think his opinion might be a little bit biased? Now, let's, this, this is great. And this, uh, this is on Amazon.com, so you can go find this. The reviews are fantastic. Let me read the Amazon.com reviews to you. There's only five of them. Four of them are one star. One of them is one star. And I mean, yeah, four of them is one star. One of them is five stars. The five star one is probably written. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, wait. No, wait. No, no, no. <laughs> oh my Okay, okay.
No. All right. I was going to say the five star review was probably written by Ray Martinez himself. It is. It fucking is. The one five star review on this book right here by Ray Martinez. There, it says, sometimes we don't like to hear the truth, but in this case, it will be good to know the truth instead of trying to figure out all the myths if there is some truth or no truth. There are three comments on that review. The first one is, did you really review your own book? Ray Martinez responds, yes, I did. And then the reason, the person who asked the question says, seems about right. Keeping with your excellent track record of honesty and independent review and opinions. <laughs> he reviewed his own book on Amazon.com. Oh, fucking Jesus Christ. Th this is too rich. Let, let me read this sentence to you again. This is a sentence. Sometimes we don't like to hear the truth, but in this case, it will be good to know the truth instead of trying to figure out all of the myths if there is some truth or no truth. That's what the faggot Ray Martinez calls a sentence. This fucking douchebag murdering piece of shit should just shut the fuck up. This is this is fucking disgusting. This and yeah, this is the kind of person who in your status society this is a police officer. This is a man who can kill other humans and then get a pay raise for it. This is a man who is a politician. This is a mayor. This is the intelligence level of the kind of person that you want to take orders from. This is the intelligence level of the kind of person that you want to have giving you instructions for how to live your life. This is the intelligence of the kind of person that those of you who are statist look up to. Let's read the, uh, let's read the reviews not written by Ray Martinez. Ray's futile attempt to swing opinion is nothing more than the usual biased hate-mongering that has created fear and intolerance. Perhaps if Ray could try thinking outside the box for a change, he could see what things are like on the other side of the aisle. Instead, Ray uses reports and stats that have been proven to be false, misleading, or outright lies as the basis of this book. A good author would try avoiding government sources and try checking out scientific areas of research as well. As a former cop, Ray should want to help keep people informed on crimes, but instead he focuses on something being illegal just because it is illegal. Ray, try reaching, researching outside the box, outside your law enforcement propaganda, and outside your narrow-minded thoughts. Ray might also want to try, this is me commenting, Ray might also want to try fucking learning how to write a sentence. Okay, next one. This is... For this collection of paper pages to be called a book is insulting to any true author. The book looks like Ray Martinez simply pulled files off his personal diary's hard drive and then slapped them together in a supposed organized fashion. However, most of the content is not original, nor Ray's. It generally consists of emails he has sent or received, or other non-original writing. The other issues I have with the content, if you can call this brain barf content, is that Ray makes numerous and almost continuous arguable claims, yet passes them off as the accepted paradigm as he simply does mention these arguable claims in the footnote sections. Also, the makeup of the book is very odd. Some chapters are five pages, but most are two pages. Yes, that is correct. Most chapters are two pages long, the longest chapter a little over 10 pages. However, those 10 pages are not actual writing by Ray, but they are a court transcript from 2 slash 9 slash 12. Okay, that was my issues with the content. Now for the real issue. This book is simply not written in any fashion I have seen published before. The writing style of Ray is elementary at best. 
few, if any, of the sentences relate to each other, and the paragraphs are just as disheveled. Here is some examples. Here are some examples of Ray's writing. <laughs> I really want to get this. I tried checking at the library to see if they had this book. Since Ray's in Fort Collins, I figured the Fort Collins library would have a book written by this faggot douchebag because he's an ex-cop in Fort Collins and he's our ex-mayor. We need to suck his fucking ball sack. But apparently they don't have it. I'm disappointed and happy at the same time. Okay. Having a dream... Now, I'm reading this word for word. These are quotes from the book by this Amazon reviewer. Having a dream is the embryo to creating a vision, which is the cause of creation, period. Creation through a person is designed by our creator. It's God's greatest gift to each of us, an idea, period. An idea conceived is hope that becomes reality. Okay. <clears throat> in 19 and I haven't I haven't read these. I, this is the first time I'm reading these. Just so you know, I have not pre-read any of this. I glanced at it, didn't pre-read it. All right. In 1982, Nancy Reagan uttered the phrase "just say no" when asked by a student what to do if she was offered drugs. I was six years old. It says punctuation in context. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> With the prolific growth of marijuana in homes, basements, garages, etc., such sites are more than likely to have fungus. When I worked in <clears throat> when I worked in drug enforcement, we found many grow operations with hydropod systems and grows in sheds and basements. Whew. Okay, then the reviewer writes, my second to last compliment complaint is the argument style, if you can call it that, Ray uses. He seems to think simply by repeating something over and over, it becomes true. This makes for a very tiring, repetitive, and boring read. And that, But that's a typical status mentality, is if you repeat something over and over and over, it becomes true. I mean... <sighs> Public education, it works. How do we know it works? Because we keep saying that it works. I mean, the test scores are going down. The kids are dumber than ever. But we know that public education works because we keep saying it works. That's, that's par for the course. Lastly, the title of this book, The Truth About Marijuana, is deceptive. There is not one shred of truth in this book. This book is simply raised personal opinions that are not backed up by any non-contestable claims. Further, his complete lack of laying out any of the other side's view in any other form than reprinting emails some random people sent him makes for a weak argument. Let's be honest, to call this collection of pages a book is a joke. I want my money back. Next review. The author, Ray Martinez, is a compassionless ex-cop that helped to defeat a proposition in Fort Collins, Colorado that would have given sick, suffering, and dying people access to a medicinal plant. He knows little about cannabis and its medical use, but attempts to pad his pocket by writing a book about the dangers of marijuana use. The only thing he can say is, quote, don't let our town go to pot, unquote. If you are looking for a book about cannabis, regardless of your stance or opinion about, the effective her about this effective herb, this book is not for you. Martinez and others like him are part of the reason why sick people over 8,000 in Fort Collins area do not have access to an effective and totally safe medicine. He appears in the documentary video American Weed, which is available for viewing online. If you want more information about medical marijuana, this book is not for you. And finally, this one right here. In this book, Mr. Martinez, a retired law enforcement officer, provides an overview of his personal opinions regarding marijuana. Anyone who is interested in obtaining factual information and objective analysis by this topic by qualified medical doctors should instead consult the excellent book entitled Marijuana Myths, Marijuana Facts, a review of the scientific evidence. Blah. Ray Martinez. 
On the payroll for the rec room, attacks the person who calls the rec room out for their behavior as not being a real journalist. Ray Martinez can't form sentences and paragraphs. A man who has murdered other humans, a man who has stolen from other people, a man who has put other humans in cages for having plants, a man who can't write a fucking sentence that makes any sense. And ask yourself this. When someone accuses you of not being a real journalist, I mean, that's kind of like not being allowed in the rec room. It's something you can almost be proud of. I mean, if Ray Martinez called me, quote unquote, not a real journalist, I would put that shit on my LinkedIn profile. Being called, first of all, being not a real journalist isn't exactly an insult when you consider that what passes for... I mean, look at the those two little cunts who wrote the hit piece for a... What was it? ABC Nightline? On the Manosphere. I mean, one of them works as a sales clerk at Abercrombie & Finch. I mean, that's what journalism is nowadays. It's little 23-year-old girls who work as sales clerks. That, I mean, that's her job. Is she's, She runs a cash register at Abercrombie and Finch, but she wrote a news piece for ABC News. I mean, that's what a real journalist is nowadays, people who don't even get paid to do the journalism. A real journalist nowadays spends most of their time copying and pasting from the AP website. A real journalist has to repeat what the government tells them to repeat and tow the company line and obey the corporations because remember journalism is about selling advertising time and to sell advertising time you have to get a lot of ratings but you also have to not offend your corporate overlords so not being a real journalist is not exactly an insult furthermore being accused of not being a real journalist by a faggot douchebag like Ray Martinez, I mean, that's even twice as delicious. <laughs>